Welcome back as always. You know if they ever make another one of these, if by some miracle they make a new Mario game one day, I got some suggestions for you, Nintendo. Yeah, I'm using up all my clout with this one. Well, if Mongoose One Billion says to do it, then we have to do it. Anyway, um, fuck, what was I even gonna say? Oh yeah, here's my brilliant million dollar idea for the new Mario game. What you gotta do is, uh, you gotta dial up, uh, Mario's, uh, Italian-ness to, uh, to an unpleasant degree. Give him, like, a, like an elderly mother that he gets in arguments with, and, and of course you gotta, you gotta dial up the accents, too, and he's a fucking fanook, ma! He's, he's talking about Luigi. Every day, no, no I lost it, fuck. Every day... This cocksucker comes in, and he's saying, Mario. Yeah, do all of that, Nintendo. You listening, Reggie fils -me? You listening, Mr. Yamauchi? I don't believe either of those people work at Nintendo anymore. But the point still stands. Ah, shit. I don't have sound when I'm doing this gameplay, so I couldn't tell that the blocks were about to, uh, a disappear out from under me. How rude of Nintendo to rely solely on an audio cue. They need to be more accommodating to people who are deaf or hard of hearing. Like my mother. Anyway, so on to that airship. It's a holdover from Mario 3. This game's just something of a, a collage of ideas of, from other Mario games. You get the the ships from 3, um, I guess the boss battles are kind of inspired by Mario 3 as well. Uh, I guess they didn't really take anything from Mario 2, did they? Maybe they should have. Would have been more fun that way. I want to throw carrots at a man's head. Mario 2 never gets the attention it deserves from old Nintendo. Did they even have Mario 2 themed items in the Mario Makers games? Did they have those vegetables you can yank out of the ground? For God's sakes, I have the game, I should know this, but... Seems like something they would do to just leave it out of there. You know, it's, it's too difficult to program or, or whatever. Another one of Nintendo's crappy excuses. Like with that 3DS Mario Maker where you could only play it online or some such, uh... Nonsense. Or, um, they, they couldn't fit the, the ice climbers into the Wii U Smash Bros because it was too hard to render two characters at once, and it wasn't too hard to do it on the freaking GameCube. Nintendo and your silly excuses. And speaking of Mario Maker, what's the point of even making games like this anymore now that the fans can just do it themselves? <laughs> You know, what's the point of even making these videos? What was the point of bringing back Hayden Christensen if he's just gonna be in the Vader suit the whole time? These are the questions faced by entertainment nerds of the 2020s. So anyway, onwards to Desert World. We gotta help Shia LaBeouf dig all of those holes. You know, if you pause on those ball-spitting enemies on just the right time, it looks really weird and creepy. So anyway, before this recording session started, I took a, a glance to see if uh, Chugga Conroy had ever done an LP of this. He always makes a good consultant when you're looking for jokes to steal for your own Let's Plays that two people are going to see. And anyway, he... Uh, he did this game on his secondary channel, The Runaway Guys, you know where it's him and, and all of his gross, ugly, and weird friends. Anyway, so as you can imagine, there would have been four people on the session, and I came to the realization that this game has separate levels for multiplayer mode versus single player mode, because they were on the same level, and they had Easter Island heads sticking up out of the ground, and obviously that's not happening for me. I'm thinking that's a multiplayer exclusive thing. Nintendo is discriminating against people with no friends.
Which, to be honest, is probably a good percentage of their fan base. So, some sort of brutal home invasion took place during that cutscene, and now all of Toad's belongings have been taken away. We gotta go get them back. And you gotta help us. Now, in this next segment, the warp pipes work a bit differently. I'm not quite sure if this was just worked on by people who had never played a Mario game somehow, or if they're trying to mix it up. You see that? What was wrong with just going down the warp pipe like in days of old? I mean, that's what they're for. They're pipes, for God's sake. Why do they function like cannons all of a sudden? I don't understand. But enough about that. It's time for us to catch the perp. I was trying to do the thing from uh, Rayman Origins, you know, where you had to chase after the treasure chest. Because functionally, that's what that level just was. Same idea. Rayman Origins is a very good game, by the way. Gets my stamp of approval. Okay, maybe if our character is also Nabbit, maybe we can do something with that, huh? It's a, a fight fire with fire, as they say. Just gotta find the damn button. Okay, where are you? There you are. Oh. I guess not. I guess they thought of that one. Hmm. I came within mere inches of grabbing him the last time, but they just put so much stuff in the way. Although I suppose that's the purpose of all of this. You couldn't even call this a video game if there wasn't some element of challenge to it. What would you even call a video game without any level of interactivity? A Sony game! Sorry, I had to. Anyway, um... Yeah, we're out of chances to... to grab Nabbit, unfortunately. You know, the idea of an elusive enemy that rewards you with great riches if you can catch him actually goes back quite a ways in Mario games. I do believe it was Mario 64 that had that invisible enemy who would spew coins all about if you could catch him. Do you see the parallel there between that and uh, Nabbit? In some respects, it almost sounds like an allegory for Japanese work culture, you know? Uh, no, no, I don't know. Well, let me explain. See, uh, the most financially lucrative enemy is that which is the most difficult to catch. So if you want to obtain great wealth, you really have to, you have to go for it. Everyone in Japan is chasing their metaphorical nabbit in the hopes of attaining great riches. And that's why you see people jumping off buildings over there, because people spend their whole lives metaphorically chasing after nabbit. But no matter how fast you chase him, he's always one step ahead. Yeah, chew on that for a while. So the next time you're on your way to Best Buy in your Toyota Corolla and you're listening to Hello Mother, Hello Father by Alan Sherman and you pull up to the stoplight and you've got a moment to yourself, take a moment to reflect on what's been said in part three of this Mario Let's Play. Has it all been for a waste? Are we all just spending our days chasing the damn dollar? What the hell are any of us doing with our lives? Anyway, let's give that level another go. It's a very common trope in 2D platformers to have a level where everything's completely dark and you have just one source of illumination that you have to carry with you. I know uh, Donkey Kong Country 2 did that concept really well where it was a uh, 
an underwater level and you had an angler fish, you know, the, the angler being the one with the light on its head, an angler fish was following you all throughout and he was your one source of light. And when you turned from left to right, he would turn with you. So if, like for one frame, as he was turning, the light would be pointed directly at the camera and they'd make the entire screen flash white. That was always a really cool trick. But yes, a very common trope in 2D platformers. I'd imagine there's probably an indie game out there who probably has an entire game based on this one concept. Seems like something they do, you know? Something you can get on Steam for $15 and it's over in 90 minutes and every level is built on that one mechanic but there's slight variations as the game goes on. This game doesn't have any slight variations on any of its mechanics though. They just make you do something once and then on to the next thing. Some could argue that that's a bad game design. Perhaps that's why the Wii U failed. Nah, that's not why the Wii U failed. I've seen that, uh, what's, what's that guy's name? I've seen that narrow video about why the Wii U failed. It wasn't because of Mario. It was because of that stupid fucking Fisher-Price toy that they made you use. Oh, Nintendo. <laughs>